I was born poor, lived poor, and died poor. And these words are coming from a Pope, not from an ordinary man. We know what glorious life a Pope has, how blessed they are, and what makes him say, I was born poor, I lived poor, and I die poor. What is that poverty of the spirit that these saints have practiced that has made their life so rich and so inspiring that even today we draw inspiration from their richness. But they say we were poor. And what makes them rich? Who makes them rich and who adds meaning to their life? And that is what they would like to tell us as a story of their life. And who makes my life rich? It is the mercy of God. Who makes my life so inspiring to others? The one whom I have encountered in life and accepted in my life as the saviour of my life. And that is what St. Augustine would say. Love and do whatever you want. Because love never hurts. And we know that beautiful letter that St. Paul writes on love. Love is never envious. Love is never boastful. Love never looks at one's glory. Love never cheats. Love bears all things. Accepts all things. Love is patient. Love is gentle. Love is kind. And St. Augustine says, love and do whatever you want. Because what flows out of love is kindness, is forgiveness, is mercy, acceptance. It is goodness that flows out of love. Love can never give birth to something that is evil. Love can never give birth to something that is unacceptable. And that is why John would go to the extent of saying, God is love. God is love. When we love, we know God. And when we do not love, we do not know God. And when we do not love, when we do not have that heart that beats for love, and he says, you do not know God. God becomes alien to us. God becomes stranger. It is like, though we are in the presence of the Lord, we are not able to understand what he means to us.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, and my dear children in Christ. A warm welcome to you to this Eucharistic celebration. Today we are celebrating the fourth Sunday in the ordinary time. And each one of us, when we come into the presence of the Lord, we feel that we should be blessed. We feel that we should be acceptable in the sight of God. And through the Gospel, the Lord tells each one of us who will be blessed in the presence of the Lord and who is acceptable in the sight of God. And he gives a list of those who are blessed in the sight of God. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those, are those who thirst for righteousness sake. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. And the Lord tells us who will be blessed and who is acceptable in the sight of God. Today, as we offer this Eucharistic celebration, let us open our hearts and minds to the word of God through which God wants to communicate to us and accept the word and let the word find place in our heart. And let each one of us participating in this Mass be blessed and become acceptable in the sight of our Heavenly Father. My dear brothers and sisters and my dear children in Christ, when we accept our poverty we discover the magnanimity of God. When we accept our poverty, we discover the magnanimity of God. How magnificent God is, how great God is, and that can happen only with those who are poor in spirit. Many of us know about Saint Pius X, a Pope of the Church. And on his grave, these words are inscribed, I was born poor, lived poor, and died poor. And these words are coming from a Pope, not from an ordinary man. And which of us can say in the worldly sense, looking at the Pope, what a poverty is living. We know what glorious life a Pope has. How blessed they are. And what makes him say, I was born poor, I lived poor and I die poor. What is that poverty of the spirit? that these saints have practiced that has made their life so rich and so inspiring that even today we draw inspiration from their richness. But they say we were poor. And what makes them rich? Who makes them rich and who adds meaning to their life? And that is what they would like to tell us as a story of their life. Every time we encounter the life story of our saint, that is what they want to tell us. 
we were poor in spirit and we have discovered the magnanimity of God we have discovered the greatness of God when we say poverty of the spirit that does not mean that we need to tell the world look at how small I am how weak I am that is not poverty of the spirit the poverty of the spirit is we don't say that we are small we tell the world look at a mighty God who is with me look at a God who is so big and great is with me and I place my complete trust in the Lord and that is the true meaning of the words of Pope when he says I was born poor lived poor and I die poor and who makes my life rich it is the mercy of God who makes my life so inspiring to others the one whom I have encountered in life and accepted in my life as the savior of my life and today the Lord is giving us the basis of our Christian existence the Beatitudes and we say when we say Beatitude these should be the attitude of Christians every Christian must have these things as the attitude the poverty of the spirit the mercy that the Lord is expecting out of us that humility that hunger for righteousness sake and when we accept when we are persecuted for the sake of Christ he says your reward is great in heaven and these become the basis of our Christian existence upon this we build our Christian life we remove the beatitude from our Christian teaching nothing remains nothing remains we remove the beatitude what the Lord says in today's gospel we minus that and look at the gospel the gospel is empty our Christian life is empty and today the Lord gives us the basics the basics of our Christian life and what makes us acceptable in the sight of God what makes us blessed in the sight of God these are the ones it is not that these things are found separately they are found together it is not that when I am poor in poverty I do not show mercy it is always together it is always together and the Lord says who is blessed in my sight and who is acceptable to me and the Lord says blessed are the meek blessed are those who hunger for righteousness blessed are the merciful blessed are the peacemakers blessed are those who love and the Lord says these are those who are blessed in my sight and these are those who are acceptable to me and once we are blessed in the sight of God once we are acceptable in the sight of God whatever we do is acceptable and that is what St. Augustine would say he, put, he would put it very plainly he would say love and do whatever you want because love never hurts and we know that beautiful letter that St. Paul writes on love love is never envious love is never boastful love never looks at one's glory love never cheats love bears all things accepts all things love is patient love is gentle love is kind and St. Augustine says love and do whatever you want because what flows out of love is kindness is forgiveness is mercy acceptance it is goodness that flows out of love love can never give birth to something that is evil love can never give birth to something that is unacceptable and that is why John would go to the extent of saying God is love God is love when we love we know God and when we do not love we do not know God he puts it very plainly he says when you love you know God you know what God means in your life and when we do not love when we do not have that heart that beats for love and he says you do not know God God becomes alien to us God becomes stranger it is like though we are in the presence of the Lord we are not able to understand what he means to us 
He who knows to love knows God. He who does not know to love does not know God. And today, that is where the Lord is getting us. And when the Lord says, Blessed are those who are merciful. And mercy is the face of God. Mercy is the identity of God. And that is what Jesus did through all his works and through his words. Every miracle that Jesus performed, whenever he healed, cured, cleansed them of their evil, when the Lord raised them to life again, all these things show us the merciful face of the Father. And Jesus is the merciful face of the Father. And he came precisely for that. Because in the Old Testament, they could not understand who God is. God was someone who was terrifying, someone who is waiting to punish us, someone who is out of our reach, someone who is not connected to our day-to-day -day life. That is how people looked at God. God was a thing of adoration. Keep him somewhere away and we adore only the high priest can go into the Holy of Holies and all the others stand outside. What have you got to do with God? Nothing. Stand out and look at him. And who is God? And they would say, we do not know. But Jesus came and said, who is God? God is Emmanuel with you. I will talk to you. I will cure you. I will cleanse you. I will heal you. I will cry with you. And he says, I am a God with you. And I have come to tell you who God is. And when we look at Jesus, he is the merciful face of the Father. Jesus is the identity of God. He is the face of God. And in Jesus, we have the complete revelation of God. And now we know who God is. And what he means, God is not a thing of adoration. God is not someone who is alien to our life. God is someone who is with me in my day-to-day -day life. And that God is reminding us what makes us blessed in his sight. And what gets us closer to him. Acceptable in his sight. And today he tells us these things. And every time... We live up to the beatitude. The Lord says, you're close to my heart. You're close to my heart. And every time we live the beatitude, and the beatitude becomes our attitude, we are getting closer and deeper into Christ. We are growing better and better in Christ. And the result would be, one day we feel that Christ is dwelling in us. And he has taken complete control of our life. And we see that culmination in the life of St. Paul in his words when he says, I live, not I, but Christ lives in me. Because these beatitudes had become his attitude. His guideline for life. And he says, now I feel I am not Paul anymore, but Christ lives in me. And in his second letter to the Corinthians, he says, when the Lord says, blessed are those who are persecuted for my sake. And remember, your reward is great in heaven, he says. And St. Paul would say, I am content with my hardships, with persecution, with insults for the sake of Christ. And he says those beautiful words, in my weakness, when I am weak, then I am strong. And that is the meaning of the poverty of the spirit. St. Paul says, when I am weak, then I am strong. Every time I feel I am weak, it is there Christ manifests himself as a mighty God. If that is not happening somewhere, our spiritual unity with the Lord is at stake. Somewhere that is challenged. Every time in my tears, in my weakness, in my poverty, I must see the magnanimity of God. As St. Paul would say in his second letter to the Corinthians, when I am weak, 
then I am strong. Today, as we are here, once again in the presence of the Lord, as I told you in the beginning of the Mass, each one of us, when we come in the presence of the Lord, our wish is that we are blessed. Our wish is that we become acceptable, that everything that we tell God becomes acceptable to Him. And the Lord tells us who is acceptable in His sight. Today, let these beatitude of Christ sink deep into our heart. And let each one of us feel that in my weakness, God is strong. It is in my poverty, God manifests His magnanimity. May that magnificent God be experienced by each one of us. For the Lord is my tower, and he gives me the power to tear down the work of the enemy. In a difficult hour, he will crush the devourer and bring a power of darkness underneath my feet. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the Most High. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the Most High. The name of the Lord. Is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord.